Jeffrey, I really appreciate you hanging in there with me today. This is the fifth episode that we have batch recorded in one sitting. This is an all-time record for us. And uh, I told you at the end of the last one, the fourth one, I said, hey, you got one more in you? Because I'm feeling it today. (laughs) I am totally feeling it. Um, must have been because we went to Yoshi's last night in, o- in Oakland, saw Keiko Matsui, this insanely incredible piano keyboardist. And I just, I get so far. I mean, to me, music, watching, watching people live, performers live do their thing. Yeah. Is just in Yoshi's to me in Jack London Square in Oakland. It's just, it's incredibly beautiful venue where it's small enough that it's just, and it's intimate. And, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. we're, we're in the second row. We always buy these. It's called meet and greet where yep. you get to actually meet and, and chat for just a second with, with, with the artist and get a picture taken with them. Um, but it's so inspiring. So yeah. inspiring to watch these guys. And for me, it always has like, maybe that's why I'm so verbose today. I can't stop yakking. Could be. Because I'm fired up from last night. But uh, I appreciate you kind of going with the flow today. Uh, guys, listen, this is gold ball hunting. Uh, another yes, episode, is. another, uh, episode of our podcast. We're 100 plus. I'm not sure what number this one is. 107, maybe something like that. We're just cranking through them. We're doing this every day. But as I said, in the, in the, uh, at the top here, this is the fifth one that we've batched today. Uh, yeah. didn't say botched, batched, batched, batched. Yes. 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 Um, so we're like a small, we're like a small boutique winery or a small distillery. We do, we do small craft batches <laughs> of helping our students. <laughs> Good. That's right. These, these are all custom fixes. <laughs> yes. Well, another way we're helping our students is we've got a uh, offer for a free private coaching call. Uh, the three of us, you, me and Jeff, we get on, on, on the phone and it's only 10 minutes. It is free, yep. but it's only 10 minutes. So you got to bring that one thing in your game right now that, uh, could be holding you back from getting the result that you want. Not that we have got the magic bullet, magic pill for you that in 10 minutes, by minute number six, boom, here you go. But we can certainly put you on the path that will help you eventually get that result that you want. The way you get onto that call, free, it's private, goldballhunting.com. Drop in a first name, email address, click the button, and you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler. So, Jeff, here's the... Here's the thing I want to talk about today, and that is uh, limiting beliefs. And we've all got yeah. it. doesn't matter what part of your Without life you're in. You know, you've, you, you know, we all have them at some point. And we all need to figure out how do we stop telling right. ourselves that stupid story of why we right. can't do this thing. So I'm curious, and I'm not going to ask you to name names. You wouldn't do that anyway. But your students, your students, yeah. what? What things are they telling themselves that literally is holding them back from being stuck, from right. actually starting to move the needle to where they start like, I mean, not feel like they, they are playing better tennis day in and day out. Give us some examples of uh, yeah, of that <laughs> stuff. Yeah suffering silently in your mind right yeah so, you know we've talked about uh you know seneca the the roman philosopher who you know was uh you know we we suffer more in our imagination than we do in reality right and so a limiting belief is is just that it's it's a story it's a it's a recurring theme in your mind when i get to this point in a match or when i'm you know, driving to a tournament or whatever it might be, or just something technical that's going on in, in your game that um, that you're not getting or having trouble with, and you've built a story around it, and that's because that's what that is. It's a limiting belief. So, so what it means is that you've you've decided that um, something something's going to happen to the negative if I do this, or I can't learn to do this because, and then whatever whatever the excuse is, you know, and again, nothing could be farther for the truth. You, you've either been, you've either been taught that or you had a rough, you know, when you were first learning the game, you, you had something happen and a coach or a, or a teacher or somebody said, Oh, you shouldn't do that because, and then actually you learn later that the person that gave you that advice really didn't know what the hell they're talking about. In fact, 
they were just learning the game just like you. So they had no basis for understanding or actually <laughs> any kind of uh, street cred, <laughs> right? Authority right. to tell you, the, right? So it's amazing, you know, as, as, as just human beings, you know, that we are so ready to receive um, – as to receive as the truth something that is just not true at all. And so, yeah, so for my students, you know, um, one major one is a, is the, is the belief that, um, if I could technically hit the ball better, I, I would, that was, that would then solve my ability to win matches. Right. So that, that's one. And that, that's a, that's a few students that, that, um, well, let's, let's kind of live that, live in that, that live in that zone. You know? I want to, I, um, I want to, I want to dig into that for, for a, a little bit because I think that's pretty common. I don't think that's a unique, yeah. right? A unique limiting belief, and and I've been guilty of that myself from time to time. Where I think, I, I, I think every, every player has. Yeah. I think we all have. I mean, yeah. if I go out there and work and work and work, it'll solve my problem. And it's um, how is that a limiting belief? I mean, in terms of you're saying that if you if you go out. If, if, if you think if I put in enough time, I'll perfect it to where right. to where it's just well, it, it's going to be automatic. And and, and so, to, yeah, yeah but, I mean, it's like but, to me, that's but, a limiting but, but, belief because it does hold you back because you you never get to perfect it. There's no way you can do that. And so it holds you back, I think, as an excuse to keep working on your game. I mean, not not that we should ever stop practicing, but it, thinking, I'm gonna I'm gonna perfect this thing. Right. Well, and, you know, going going back to a few episodes, is what you're working on making the boat go faster? Yeah. Or is it moving the meter right? And so, so the limiting the belief that is born out of out of always wanting to live in the technical is that anytime you lose a point because you made an error. Right. Um, you, you immediately go to the mechanics of what you just did. And so your belief is if I hit that forehand better, if I if I hit that forehand more mechanically, let's say, correct, um, then I would have won the point. And the problem with that is that. you the, the real issue might be you're setting up some of the worst geometry in the, in the process, in the construction of the point that keeps putting you in this place that now you're under the most amount of stress of blah, 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 to try and produce a technically correct forehand. So you've laid the groundwork of just, like I said, the worst scenario, right, possible. So the, so the, so you keep thinking that it's a mechanical problem in your forehand when really the solution might be Okay, what you're not recognizing is this person is doing X, Y, Z, and you keep feeding that 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 pattern. So let's make a new choice here. And now all of a sudden, wow, you know, my forehand seems to be going in because I'm no longer pressed into this situation. I can solve it not by hitting my forehand better, simply by understanding the game a little better and how to construct a point and understanding the geometry of the game a little better. Yeah, yeah. I, so, so that. <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. No, well, so so it becomes so that. The focus on the technical becomes a blind spot for not actually learning how to play the game, which is different than stroke mechanics. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, no I think uh, I think I, I think that's good. I think there's there's other limiting beliefs as well, where you think, well, I just can't beat this player, and and uh, I've seen it. I mean, I, I'll I'll never forget. I think I was playing the fifty hard courts in Santa. No somewhere else anyway i just remember i remember uh watching a match and someone commented well this guy is the first guy who actually believes he can beat this other top player and all the guys before him just never really believed that they could beat him right and and i was i thought about that and i looked at the guy and i said yeah he's kind of He's sort of it, it, just the way he's playing and just his sort of attitude, especially between points. It really you kind of get the sense he believes he can beat this guy. And I looked at this guy and I said, he doesn't hit the ball that great. Right. You know, he's, he's not like the fastest guy in the court, but he's got this belief that right. he can actually win the match. And so he's going to go out there and he's going to deploy 
his game plan. He's just not going to react to what, other, what, the, what this other top guy right. does and just kind of hope that, right. you know, the guy pulls a hammy that day and that's how I beat the guy. <laughs> right. That's a rough little strategy right there. Yeah. Um, kind of unpredictable, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. What other, what other limiting beliefs do you think, I mean, I mean, again, without naming names, in a student that you might have, and it doesn't have to be the big picture, but, um, you know, something that you think is kind of holding them back that if you could, if you could help them think a different way, uh, it would help them play better. I think, I think another one is that is, is the focus on, um, the, the match is always something that's happening to them. So they always have to respond to what's what the what the other person's assets are, and so they're so focused on don't let her hit that ball, don't let him do this. Watch out if you give him this kind of ball, and what so it becomes this like uh, you know this bob and weave through the match of trying to avoid things, but never actually looking to see what what should I pick at. How do I, again, construct points and how do I then look at this through my skill set and say, how do I inflict some pain here? How do I disrupt this person who's a good player, blah, blah, blah? Um, How do I, how can I possibly compete here um, on a level that actually starts to balance things out? So I, so I think, so one, one big limiting belief or it's a it's a kind of limiting perspective, let's say, not necessarily a belief, but it's a limiting perspective. When you know, and I hear this from from uh, some of the some of the players we coach, and I always have to bring them back to how are you going to create uh, construct a point that disrupts them? How are you going to do that? Not. What do I do when they do this to me? What do I, so that's really kind of scenario. You've heard this a million times yourself, you know, what do I do, Jeff, when, you know, oh, he, he's got a really nice slice. He really, he really knows how to cut that short ball and slice it down the line heavy and come in behind it. And so I listen and and I'm thinking, I'm starting, my head starting to like rattle and I go, okay, so I, I agree with you. The guy hits a really nice slice approach shot you know, down the line on that, on that, you know, shorter ball. So let's go back to that shorter ball that you keep producing for him. (laughs) Right. Let's stop worrying about how great his approach is off your short ball. And let's get down to the business here of saying, what would happen (laughs) if we understood why we keep producing that? Yeah. Yeah. That changes now the perspective. It changes the outlook and it changes it. We get a different result. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win the point. However, you know, it's not banging your head against the wall and expecting something different to happen. So that's another, you know, again, limiting perspective, I'd say, that that um, that's good. blocks it. That's good. Well, listen, guys, I would encourage everyone to really start to kind of dig into yourself, kind of get deep in the weeds on this. What, what are you, what stories are you telling yourself? What limiting beliefs are you telling yourself about your ability to be able to... Um, play at a, at, at a little bit higher level. And, and I think that if, if everyone sort of was to sit back, maybe even ask someone else, what do you see? What do you see in me? Because sometimes it's so hard to have that kind of, kind of right. that, that, that insight in ourselves. So uh, my computer is about to die because I did not bring, I, we're totally running on battery juice here because uh, I switched rooms. Yeah. Anyway, so we have to do this. We got to wrap this up quickly. Jeff, what you, is you, it? You want, you want to borrow mine? <laughs> <That'd be good. laughs> here, here, uh, I don't think, I don't think the little dongle right here is going to do it. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure. Anyway, uh, what do we want the folks to do right now, Jeff? We'd love to have you like us, share us, please subscribe and let us know what you think down below. Outstanding guys. Get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Yes. Jeffrey, we're going to do this again tomorrow. I can't wait.